Hello students, greetings from LFI. We hope and pray that you and your family are safe, strong and healthy. I, Sir Karan, will be taking your signs this year. So my first video, especially for grade 7, I'll be starting with unit 10, that is measuring motion. It's all about speeds and motion. As a kid, we all have been fascinated. We all watch movies. We all inspire after watching the movies. And basically, today we'll be talking about the speed. Whenever, for example, like whenever we, uh, whenever if you have ever watched the Formula One, we talked about speeds. We are very curious to know the speeds of the car, the speeds of the plane, the speeds of the fighter jets, and all. So we'll be discussing a little briefly on the topic today. So actually, what is speed, first of all? As you can see, I've written here, speed is the quantity that tells us how fast an object is moving. I repeat again, speed is the quantity that tells us how fast an object is moving. For example, we might say that the car's speed was 80 km per hour when it hit the wall. Just an example, just a sighting example. We may say like, like the speed of the fighter jet was 560 kilometers per 560 miles per hour before it crashed. So, let's try to know a little bit more. Remember the units of time and speed. Units of time and speed. Time is measured as seconds, minutes, and hour. Where speed, we use the unit as meter, kilometer. To measure speed, we write as, we write as meter per second or kilometer per hour. How do we calculate speed? We have a very simple formula here. Yeah? Speed can be calculated by distance divided by time. Now using this, using this formula, we can also find out the distance as well as time. For distance, cross multiply, we get speed into time. For time, we get distance divided by speed, right? Once again, the units of time and speed, for time we use seconds, minutes, and hour, and for speed we use meter or kilometer. To measure speed, we write as meter per second or kilometer per hour. This is a very small formula and which is very important for you. You should always remember that in order to calculate the speed or the distance or the time, we use this formula to make it easier for us for calculating. Say, for example, uh, let's, uh, let's give you a small example. Say the distance between Dimapur and Kohima is approximately, say, around like 74 kilometers. And suppose that you are traveling by your own personal car or you are traveling by a taxi. So the time taken for you to reach Kohima starting from Dimapur, say, you take two hours. Calculate speed. Just a small example. See, so the distance between Dimapur and Kohima is 74 kilometers, and time taken is two hours. So we are asked to calculate speed. So how do we calculate speed? By using this formula, it becomes easier for us to calculate the speed, at, uh, the speed of the vehicle, or your personal car, 
or taxi or bus, whichever it may be, the mode of transportation doesn't matter, but it becomes easier for us to calculate the speed. So let's try to solve this one. So here we have distance given as 74 kilometer and here the time taken time is given as 2 hours we are asked to calculate the speed when we look here the formula for speed is given as distance divided by time Distance we have a 74 kilometers unit and time is given as 2 hours unit. We can cancel out these two to 3 to 6 and 2 into 7, 14. So we get the speed as 37 kilometer per hour. So this way, using this small formula, we are, we are able to find out the, or calculate the speed as well as in the same manner, we can also find calculate the distance provided we have the provided we have the unit or provided we have the timings the distance time and speed using all those three we can calculate either speed distance and time now for your in your chapter in motion need 10. You will, you will come across quite a lot of calculations out there. You need not worry. All you have to do is just use the formula and then just try to solve it. Now, moving on to the next one. We talk about, uh, let's talk about speed check. The term speed, uh, speed check itself tells us like it's a device or it's something like in order to keep a track on the speed. Especially when you uh, in other states or abroad, other countries, many countries, on almost all the countries, they have the speed limit is given there. What happens is that the speed cameras are the speed camera stands are not placed at the sides of the roads. What for? In order to maintain the traffic regulations and in order to observe and order to also maintain and then to see that the people do not overspeed. What actually does it do? It actually takes the picture of a vehicle. For example, like uh, say uh, around the school area, if the speed limit is 20 kilometers per hour, but suppose now I'm dri driving a personal car and then if I over speed or exceed the speed limit, so what does, what does, what does uh, it do? The cameras that are placed on the sides of the roads They keep a track. There are two de de uh, detector strips in the road. They are known. They are a known distance. Like you know, like uh, like a, a particular distance has been maintained. Now, if I overspeed the speed limit, what happens is that the sensor, the detector, the detector detects the car as it passes over each strip and then it activates a timer it activates the timer and then it calculates the speed from this point to the other point how much speed what or what was the actual speed from one point a to point b a mini computer calculates the speed and the same way if i over exceed or i over speed the speed limit it takes the picture along and along with the registration number and then the person, or if, in my case, if I overspeed, then I'll be booked accordingly. It depends on the traffic rules and regulation that is uh, different from one, one country to other. The same way from one state to another. So this is about the speed check. Why do we need speed, uh, speed check? You know actually what happens is like our country experiences, or almost all the country experiences, a very high rate of accidents per year. So this becomes very necessary in order to keep a track 
especially in the schools, like school areas, the hospital areas, and especially in the neighborhoods where people over exceed and then it leads to lot, uh, it leads to lots of mishaps. And to cite a few ex uh, to cite a few examples, we read in the newspapers as well, like rash driving, over speeding, it leads to injury as well as it leads to loss of life as well. So next, let's learn about the constant speed and then the changing speed. What actually do we mean by the constant speed? Constant speed means when the speed of an object remains the same. That is, its speed, its speed does not increase or decrease. It remains the same. We say it is moving at a constant speed. Whereas changing speed, when the speed of an object does not remain constant. That means it keeps on changing. It increases or decreases. So that's the constant speed and then the changing speed. And as you can see on the board, here I have written here distance and time graph. So let's try to understand what actually distance and time graph actually means and how it is helpful to us. You can see here, as I've written here, it is used to record the pattern of movement of a moving object, whether it is constant, whether the speed is increasing or whether the speed is decreasing. It shows how far an object travels in a given time. Distance is plotted on the y-axis, that is the left, and time is plotted on the x-axis, that is at the bottom. Here I have uh, drawn a few graphs to just to give you a small idea about it. So as you can see here, as it says, y-axis denotes the distance, and then the x-axis denotes the time. Now when you look at the first, when you look at the first graph here, you can see that the object, the object, the slope, call it as a slope, it remains the same. That means it tra if the object is traveling equal distances in equal time. Say for example, in two hours, if this object travels and then the speed is constant, what does it mean? It means if we, if we take a point here, say point. So say the time is two hours, right? So in two hours, it can cover up, it covers up two kilometers. Likewise, in three hours, it covers three kilometers. So we can see the difference here. It remains constant. That means from, from, uh, from two hours to three hours, we can see that the distance is constant. It, the distance it covers is one kilometer. That means the time is also the time remains the same as well as even the distance it covers remains the same. So this is an example of an object that is, uh, that is moving at a constant speed or its uh, speed remains the same at each intervals. So traveling equal distances and equal times. Now when we move on to the next one, the next graph, uh, if you can see here, the time is given here, there's, I have taken it in terms of hours and the distance I have taken it in terms of kilometers. You can see there are two cars here. Car A and Car B. Now, when we, when, when you see, when you look at the graph, it becomes easier for us to make it out that the Car A is traveling faster. That's the reason why the slope, the slope is very steep. The slope it's uh, it's slowly increases because why? Because it's traveling faster than the car than the other car. That is Car B. Now. When we move on to the next one, that is, you can see here, the slope becomes a curve. What it means? It means that the speed of the car is not constant, but the speed of the car is actually accelerating, actually increasing. It increases. As you can see here, there's a time and here is a distance. If you can see, we can see that the slope becomes a curve, which tells us that the speed of the car is not constant, but the speed of the, the, speed of the car is increasing. Now, using this graph, it becomes easier to, for us to find out the speed. Now, when we are, now if we can calculate the speed of this, we can see the speed, we have the distance, we have the time, speed of car B, you can take it, car A, we can take it, and then we can use the formula which I have shown you earlier, the speed equal distance divided by time. Using those formulas, we can find out the speed. Now, this 
this is a very small ref reference that which I've explained to you, and hopefully I I hope I try to make it as simple as possible. And when you are home, when you are working out at home, please make sure that you follow the textbook as well. And in the textbook, you'll find questions. Please try to solve it. And if you if you have any problem, if you if you are stuck in anything, you can kindly ring up to my number and hopefully I may be able to assist you or maybe able to help you. That's all for this video. Thank you. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy.